welcome to the Interactive Immersive HQ, everyone. Uh, pleasure to be here. My name is Lake Heckman. I'm a new media artist from Brooklyn, New York. I mostly create interactive installations with Touch Designer. And today, I'm going to show you how to create some audio reactive GLSL patches. Here's an example of what that's going to look like. And so for the next 10 minutes or so, uh, we'll be recreating this from scratch, more or less. So let's jump into things. I will actually just get rid of everything and first start with uh, just my shader. So I have uh, this shader from Shader Toy. Um, shader Toy. Here we go. This shader from Shader Toy that I'm going to be implementing. And I'm basically just going to copy and paste this because the intent of this video is not actually to get super deep in the GLSL of it all, uh, but rather to focus on the audio reactiveness. So I'm going to open a text port window here. I'm going to edit the contents of the shader that I just copy and pasted from here. Uh, I'm going to then just note that I ported this shader and let's work on making this run. So first I'll give us uh, a uniform called U resolution and U time. That U resolution will be me dot time, or sorry, me dot width and me dot height. And then uh, my U time can be right now just uh, abs time dot seconds. Just like that. Uh, so then all we need to do is come in here, change our uniform uh, references, however there's a uniform reference, and I think there's one more for time right there. Then we need to get rid of the arguments and make sure this function is just called main. We need to declare an out vec4 called frag color. And then uh, finally, we need to replace this frag chord with GL underscore capital frag capital chord, all one word. And then we can look at. Aha, I forgot to declare my uniforms in the shader as well. So we'll have a uniform vec2, u resolution, and then a uniform float. That's u time. And now our shader is working. I'll use Alt N, I'll drop a null, backdrop that, and then I'll bump our resolution to 1024 so that it's nice and crispy for us to work with. So uh, if you're interested in more general knowledge and more in-depth knowledge about how to port shaders from Shader Toy to Touch Designer or WebGL to Touch Designer or back, um, I have an entire series on YouTube, GLSL for Beginners. Uh, there's a video that's entirely dedicated to porting between contexts. So go check that out if you're interested uh, more. Like I said, the point of this tutorial is not so much to focus on the GLSL, but rather on the audio reactivity aspect of this. Uh, so what are a couple things that I want to do now uh, from the audio reactive perspective? Well, first of all, I need to get some audio. And so for that, I will use just the Touch Designer default audio and I will use an audio device out. Now, uh, I have this volume bar up here, and that is part of the function store toolbar. It's free, it's open source, it's on GitHub. Go check it out. It's a really great quality of life tool. And that's what I use to control my master volume up here. So now we have our audio. I'll turn the volume down just a little bit right now. And then we need to come back in here and we need to figure out what we want to make audio reactive. I'm going to have a red component that's audio reactive and I'm going to have a scale component that's audio reactive. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set up the kind of uh, connection points or variables in our shader that will be audio reactive. So first let's do red. I'm going to create a new VEC4. I'm going to call that color and I'll set that equal to what the original output was equal to. And then I can use frag color equals color. And here, nothing breaks, okay, great. And then color.r 
plus equals U red over two. Okay. It seems to be the mistake. I have not declared it up here. So I'll have a uniform float, U red and U scale, just like that. And now uh, we can see, all right, red, great. I'll make it zero for now. And uh, so now that's integrated and now we can bring in our scale. Our scale will be very easy. Uh, I'm going to just make a couple modifications up here. I'm gonna turn off, um, rather I'm gonna divide here uh, by XY and then I'm going to center UV on zero. So UV will equal UV times 2.0 minus 1.0. This will be center on origin. And this means that we're there centered on our origin. I'm gonna take out this term. So now we're, we're back centered on the origin that is now displayed in the center of our screen. And then finally, UV times equals U scale. Boom. And now we have a scale parameter that we can also link. So now we can do the actual audio analysis component. A word about audio analysis before I do this, there are many, many different ways uh, to do it. And there's tons of different tools out there in the community. Uh, I'm gonna be using the audio analysis from the palette here because it's easy to use, everybody has access to it and it makes it easy to follow along. But the concepts and overall process here that I'm using in the tutorial is uh, obviously can be used with any sort of audio reaction. So without further ado, let's come in here, drop down a null and get some channels. I'm gonna use the low that's here. I'm gonna use the snare. I'll turn this volume back up now so you guys can hear it better. Uh, gonna use the snare and then this fast and spectral density. Then I'm just gonna change the threshold of my snare a little bit. So we have a nice clean snare signal. Now I will use a couple selects. I will select my low channel. I'll select my snare channel. Uh, don't need that. Um, and then I will select my spectral density. And now I can just use these to create that audio reactive link. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use a speed chop and a null, we'll call this time, and we'll drag and drop that on my U time. And then I will add a math, and we'll make this like three. And so now we have this nice audio reactivity that is coming and uh, kind of translating through our visual based on the intensity of the song or the beat. Now, I'm gonna have a null, I'll call it red. Drop this onto our red. So now we get a little burst of red. And I'm gonna add a trigger here. Make the attack a little bit faster the decay and then bring down the sustain and the release and so now I have this nice kind of blooming sort of feel with the red and finally I will use another null with my spectral density I'll call this the scale and I'll drag and drop the scale onto our scale uniform now this needs to be uh, modified a little bit so I'll put an S curve in there like that and then my S curve um, instead of going from 0 to 1 maybe we can move this down make it like 0.5 or something and then we can also change this Oops, we can change this uh, the from range so we get a little bit more reactivity but I'm gonna just leave it at 0 and that is I think probably a very good place to stop keep this tutorial short, sweet, and to the point. So obviously if you wanted to add more pieces, 
come to this. Um, you can have as many different uniforms as you wanted, all tied to different audio reactive components. You could also use the uniform arrays of audio reactive components linked to your shader. So yeah, there's really a ton to explore. I highly recommend playing around with this a lot. And yeah, definitely explore different ways of doing the audio analysis as well. So that's all for today. Thanks for joining me on the HQ. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.